I am titling this message, What Hath Jesus Wrought? Part 1, Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, Day 126. While they are running their presidential campaigns, we're running the Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign. I feel like putting a sign on the pulpit like these politicians. Just Jesus. Call 1-800-SALVATION. I don't know. I may do that. Turn your Bibles, beloved, to John chapter 9, verse 8. The neighbors. The neighbors. You know, you got to always keep an eye on the neighbors. The neighbors, therefore, the folks living in the community, right beside you and across the street from you. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, let me erase the confusion. I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes open? You know how the neighbors are. They inquiring minds want to know. They would even say stupid things like, In case I get blind, I want to know how you got your sight back. I, I'm just... No, you just really be nosy, but that's okay. He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay. My uh, research assistant uh, fell in love with the word mud, and I had to uh, correct that as best I could yesterday. And if you have it in writing, you need to change that. these young people or something else with their wild imaginations and anointed mine eyes and said unto me go to the pool of Siloam and wash and I went and washed and I received sight this man named Jesus when y'all called Jesus I have not seen him because I was blind then said they unto him where is he he said, I know not. And I'm going to stop the reading there. But as I shared with you in the beginning, no passage of scripture has made me laugh out loud like this one. And I just cannot help but believe that this man was a black man. But I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, the Bible did not tell us his nationality or his race. But he sounds like a black man to me. Be that as it may. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for allowing us to be in your house again, to praise your holy name, to sing the songs of Zion, to preach your holy word and to hear it. And uh, we thank you for what you have done, what you're doing and what you will do. Again, afresh and anew, Lord, we confess our sins, failures, and faults. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of all of our sins, failures, and faults. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness and fill us with the power, the unction, and the anointing of your Holy Spirit. For without you, we can do nothing. Glorify your holy name. Lift up your holy Son, Jesus Christ. Demonstrate the power of your Holy Spirit, not only here, but to our friends and with our friends on Go to Church Online, live, GOBN TV, live, uh, Spreaker, live, 
Meerkat Live, Periscope Live, and uh, other live uh, platforms. Our home church, Gospel Light House of Prayer Live, and then on demand all around the world, Roku TV, Google TV, all of our friends there, and uh, Apple TV. So, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to their hearts. And as your Holy Word goes out to every country in the world in 100 languages and for the deaf, we pray that you'll demonstrate the power of your Holy Spirit, shake each person's heart, mind, soul, and spirit through the power of your Holy Word. Save those who are lost and reclaim the backslidden and revive those who are saved. Help us to get our hearts right with you before it is eternally too late. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. The great late preaching machine, Adrian Rogers, one of my favorite preachers of all time. Nobody could shuck the corn like Adrian Rogers. He can flat get it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm still surprised he's not with us because his preaching goes on. He said the same Jesus who turned water into wine can transform your home can transform your life, your family, and your future. He is still in the miracle working business. And his business is the business of transformation. Amen, somebody. Jesus transformed this man's life. And if you are born again, then you know that Jesus transformed your life. If you are in the church and you are religious and your life is not trans transformed, then, dear friend, you need to examine yourself and see whether or not you be in the faith. Amen, somebody. For some folks, we're praying to be revived, can't be revived, because they're not alive. They're dead in trespasses and sins. Maybe that's you. We pick up this passage in the aftermath of Jesus' miraculous healing of the man born blind. As you know, Jesus told the man to go and wash in the pool of Siloam in order to be healed. After Jesus performed a clay operation. Well, he was blind when he went there, and as he washed the clay off his face, not the mud as my research assistant uh, loves to use, he found that he could see. You can imagine that for him it was like being born again in a very real sense even though he was not yet born again. Uh, he had never seen before, but now he can see. It was a transformative event in his life. Naturally, he starts on his way home to go and tell his family about the amazing thing that Jesus did for him. Now, the text introduces us to the neighbors. And there's nothing like neighbors. Particularly during this time. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he 
that sat and begged on the side of the road, you and I can identify with these neighbors, neighbors to some degree. Some of us uh, may not be able to identify because even though in years past neighbors were often considered somewhat like extended family members. Even when I was growing up as a child, you, you didn't have to worry about mama and papa being there watching you because the neighbors were watching you. And when your mother and father came home, the neighbors told on you after they had whipped your tail themselves along with their children. And they'd just come right on over dragging you as soon as your mother and father pull up, you know your mother and father don't want to be bothered when they just getting out the car. They hadn't even gone to the bathroom yet. And uh, yeah, your son Daniel was over there uh, throwing uh, the football and trying to hit uh, uh, Mr. Smith's window. My son was with him. I whipped both of their asses, and, uh, and, and so I'm bringing your son over here with you so you can whip his ass as well. That's what they said. I'm just telling you what they said. Okay, I'll take care of it. Sure enough. My father would be too tired, but my mother would uh, take care of business. In this day and time, however, our neighbors, the last thing we want to hear, or the last group of people we want to hear from, are our neighbors. In most neighborhoods, neighbors don't even know each other. And in most cases, people like it like that. Back in the day, folks would, well, hey, how you doing there? They knew the person's name, hey, all right now, yeah, got you, yeah, all right. We don't see that anymore. If somebody speaks to us now, oh, we think, oh, you, oh, you getting ready to rob me? You don't know me. Don't be speaking to me. Early that morning, they saw this man with his back bent, his head down, shuffling along with his left arm out to make sure he doesn't bump into anything, tapping a cane, if you will, in front of him to make sure he doesn't stumble or fall on his way uh, through the busy streets of the city so he could sit and beg in his spot. They knew this man's parents and felt a little tinge of sympathy every time they saw the blind man, unlike many of us today. Uh, we have comedians who joke about people who have handicaps. They laugh about pushing people in a wheelchair over a cliff and all kinds of crazy stuff like that. Now, however, they see a man walking confidently with his back straight, his head up without his cane, and with his arms swinging at his sides. He was happy. They are shocked and amazed. Can it be the same man? It is too hard to believe it. The, uh, the neighbors start staring, pointing, and talking like so many of us do today. The Bible says some said this is he. Others said he is like him. They called him over as they voiced their doubts. And the Bible says he said I am he. Y'all talking about me. I'm standing right here. I can hear you. Uh, I'm the same man. Next, they want to know how all of a sudden he can see. They ask, how were thine eyes open? The man responds, a man that is called Jesus made some clay and anointed mine eyes 
and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. I do not know. The man, of course, was blind when he met Jesus, so he doesn't know what Jesus looks like. However, he has no doubts about what Jesus did for him. Amen, somebody. Amen. He is bold in his answers to their questions. He didn't care about no uh, religious establishment. I know that's bad English, but I, I'm trying to make a point. He didn't care about uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Uh, and you will see more and more of this as we go on. This man's transformation is a picture if you will, of the transformation that the gospel brings in people's lives. No one who has grown used to living one way can come in contact with Jesus and go on living the same way as before. And I've been telling y'all that for years. Some people in the church who claim to be saved and born again, and they're still living in sin, and still, and they are not convicted. They have no problem doing their evil. They don't feel guilty. Yet they call themselves born-again Christians. I doubt it very seriously. You need to examine yourself and see whether or not you be in the faith. It doesn't mean that Christians don't sin. It does not mean that uh, Christians uh, can't sin. But when you sin, you're going to feel very uncomfortable. I know that for a fact. Amen, somebody. You're going to feel guilty. You're going to try to find yourself a place to confess and repent and try to get that thing right if you are born again. When Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus, he was transformed from a bloodthirsty hater of God, a hater of Christians, rather, a hater of Christ, and Christians to the most influential Christian evangelists of all time. You might be one of those people who say, I'll never change. I'll never change. There's no hope for me. You may have tried rehab. You may have tried counseling. You may have tried pills. You may have tried self-help books and personal empowerment seminars. You might say, I've tried everything, but until you try Jesus, you have not tried everything. Your problem is most likely not physical blindness, but a problem we all share is spiritual, is spiritual blindness and spiritual death because the wages of sin is death and that is what Jesus came to cure but you must come to him and obey the gospel by believing on him for the Bible says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou you shalt be saved and just acknowledge dear friend that you are a sinner remind uh, be reminded that you are a sinner. You have done some bad things in your life. You have broken the laws of God. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And because of your sin, you are dying physically because of sin. You're dying spiritually and going to hell if you have never trusted Christ as Savior. But I have some good news for you. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He came as the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. And all you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again. For Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
The Bible also says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you want to be saved tonight? Do you want to experience a born-again transformation? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Pray with me right now, phrase by phrase, and ask Christ to come into your heart and save your soul. He will save you. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I've done some bad things in my life. I have broken your laws and therefore I deserve hell. Please have mercy and grace upon me, a sinner. As I now, the best way that I know how, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that he died on the cross for my sins, was buried and rose again. That he shed his blood on the cross for my sins as the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to repent of my sins of the past in my old life and to turn and follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake, amen. Dear friend of mine, if you just believed in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, uh, was the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world, was buried and rose again, and you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart, allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life because you're now saved. And uh, you have done, indeed, the most important thing in your life, and that is accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do, after you enter through the door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. If you trust that Jesus Christ is your Savior, please email me at dw3 at Gospel Light Society or one of our other email addresses and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. Uh, if you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Dear friend, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good. Let's all stand and pray. Mm -hmm.